Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day so far. You probably noticed that this looks a lot different than a lot of the previous videos I've been doing. Uh, you know, instead of uh, on the Mac computer next to the keyboard and all that, I want to do something a little more intimate today uh, because we're talking about something pretty interesting. So I just recently ordered a uh, Squire Strat and I have it here next to me. This is a Squire Affinity Stratocaster in Surf Green. Now the reason I'm really making this video is I want to try to answer two questions for you guys regarding this guitar. Uh, the first is, is this a good beginner's guitar? And the second question would actually be, is this a viable instrument for more seasoned players? So this came in the mail probably about six days ago or so, and I haven't done anything to it. I took it out of the box and I've been kind of playing it here and there, just getting used to it. So the Squire Strat has been around for a long time, and at this point most people would probably look at this and consider it like a beginner's guitar. It's definitely got that sort of reputation behind it. Um, but another thing is it's also a great modification platform. That is, crazy people like me might want to pick one of these cheaper guitars up and practice doing different modifications on them. So for those of you who haven't picked up the guitar yet, or maybe thinking about learning, maybe in the market for a new guitar, uh, let's talk about the Squire um, series. So Squire is Fender's lower priced kind of introductory guitars. And when it comes to Squire, there's really three different types. You have the Bullet series, you have the Affinity series, which is this one right here, and you also have the Classic Vibe series. So the Bullet series is the cheapest. Uh, it's typically sold with like an amp and a cable, some sort of bundle. Um, the Affinity series is kind of the middle of the road, which is the one we have here, once again. And the Classic Vibe is pretty well known for being uh, a good guitar. And anything beyond the Classic Vibe series uh, would say Fender on the headstock. And at that point, you're talking about uh, Mexican-made guitars and their player series. And then you get up into the American-made uh, series. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is run through the specs on this instrument. And I'm going to do a quick review and just talk to you guys and basically try to answer the two questions from the beginning. So let's start at the headstock. I like to usually start here. And again, this is the Squire logo here. And you'll notice the headstock on this is pretty large. Uh, I actually kind of like the look of this personally. I think it really kind of suits the guitar. I also like the sort of gold um, font that they have here for the Squire logo. I think that's a nice touch. Um, you know, other strats, like Fender strats, the headstocks might not be this big. There's like a smaller version and, you know, like Telecasters and all that have smaller headstocks. Okay, now taking a look at the neck here, we have what they call an Indian Laurel um, fretboard, which is this dark wood here on top. And you have 21 frets, uh, medium jumbo frets is what they have on these. On the back, this is actually the best part of the guitar in my opinion, is this unfinished uh, C-shaped maple neck. This just, I mean, we'll talk about it in a second, but it, it feels really nice. This is kind of insane how nice that feels. Also on the fretboard, we have a nine and a half inch radius, which we'll talk about some more. And we also have a six point or six screw trim system down here. We got a volume, two tones, five way selector switch. So as far as strats go, this is very typical uh, for your average strat. Also, you'll notice I kept the sticker here on the guitar because this says, Fender, free online lessons for guitar, bass, and ukulele. Start your trial. So I definitely need to take advantage of that. I need me some lessons, some free trial lessons. <laughs> right, um, I forgot to say also we have the three, it's an SSS style guitar, so three single coils. And one thing to keep in mind is that these, um, these pickups are ceramic pickups. So ceramic pickups like these tend to come in cheaper guitars, like the um, Squire stuff. If you were to get a, uh, like a Mexican-made Fender or something like that, probably have Alnico pickups in there instead. Uh, the thing about the ceramic pickups is uh, they have a different quality, really. Uh, from what I can tell, they have a little more output. They're a little less nuanced, but ultimately, you'll hear in a second, they still sound like Strat pickups. So I don't have really any complaints about that, especially on a cheap guitar. And then lastly, this is strung with uh, 9 to 42s, so pretty light gauge strings to start. <laughs> now, before we jump into the review of this, I want to quickly mention some of the guitars I previously owned, in case maybe you're familiar with some of these guitars or you've played them before. That way you might understand kind of where I'm coming from. You know, as I've uh, been playing for many years and teaching for many years as well, I've played a bunch of different guitars and owned a couple as well. So let me just list those real quick. So I've owned some cheap guitars, I've owned some expensive guitars, uh, but I'll be honest with you, some cheap guitars can play really great, some expensive guitars are really not that uh, fantastic. There's a lot of kind of, there's a lot of gray area, a lot of middle of the road stuff in there. So we're going to see where this lands. 
So when I first pulled this out of the box and picked it up and started playing, first of all, the finish. We gotta talk about the finish. And I apologize that I didn't take off um, any of the plastic on this yet. I really just wanted to keep it as is out of the box for this review and not touch anything at all. So. Uh, yeah, the color looks <laughs> really incredible. Hopefully the light in here is really showcasing this beautifully. I'll show some b-roll right now, but this is really nice. And, you know, uh, Fender calls this the million dollar color because it just sells like crazy. This is a really popular color. And you can see why. And so when I sat down to play it, um, I was excited, but at the same time, uh, disappointment grew rather quickly. I'll explain why that is. Uh, first of all, and... The biggest gripe with this guitar so far is the fret ends, the fret sprout, especially on this end, on the high E string side. So these frets are definitely very sharp. Um, I feel like they've actually unsharpened a slight bit after me playing it for almost a week now, if that makes any sense. Or maybe I'm just used to avoiding the sharp frets, that's probably what it is actually. But that's pretty rough and it was something that I haven't really experienced before. Even on cheaper instruments, I haven't had fret sprout like this before. Also, the frets themselves are a little, um, they're a little rough, you know, you hear that sort of uh, coarse, almost sandpaper sound when you use the frets. I don't know if you can hear it now. But yeah, the frets are a little bit coarse and kind of rough at the beginning here. And then the last thing is really it, the sort of tuning stability, or I should say maybe um, what's going on with the guitar nut. So some of the strings are actually pretty well um, placed in here as far as the nut and the bridge. But especially the low E string, this needs some work. Um, you know, the, the sort of tuning, it tends to go sharp. Obviously the nut is, uh, it needs some fixing. So you can get most of this in tune pretty well, but that low E string has always been um, a little bit of a hindrance. You know, so if you tune it when it's in tune, when it's open, it's gonna be out when you fret it and then vice versa. And then uh, the last negative I experienced for a little bit was some sharpness on the, um, bridge saddles here, but that's pretty much gone away at this point. So that's kind of all the negatives, and honestly, that disappointed me at the beginning, but I'll tell you what, um, after playing it for about three days, I actually, like, really started to fall in love with it, and it became more exciting to pick it up each time. Um, something about jamming on this and just kind of practicing and playing through it, uh, it's really started to inspire me and kind of change up a lot of my playing. Um, so it's funny, I started kind of uh, disappointed with it, but over the course of a couple of days, I've really grown to enjoy it and I'm just... I'm really loving it now. So here are the positives, right? Again, the back of the neck here with this sort of um, unfinished neck, this is great. I mean, this, it's funny, this is kind of the closest neck I have to my Kiesel uh, that has a raw tone finish on the back. Uh, this is kind of the closest feeling neck I have to that. And I really appreciate um, unfinished necks. You know, I have some guitars that have like a painted neck or a finished lacquered neck, and I really don't enjoy playing those guitars. Um, not as much, at least. And the thing about the nine and a half inch radius is it's really easy to bend and, you know, do bar chords and stuff. So that's been enjoyable. Uh, the one thing is I can hear the strings slipping pretty consistently in this nut. Um, so for those of you who haven't done this, you can always just, you know, uh, detune the string a little bit, put a little graphite with the, um, like a number two pencil in here, put it back in. That usually helps, uh, the slipping to go away. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to replace this nut pretty soon. So all in all, the playability is pretty decent. You know, I've kind of, I think I've trained myself to avoid the sharp fret ends a little bit and play slightly differently with that. Um, so that's the one kind of concern I have, especially for people that are even just starting out. I don't think anyone should have to deal with super sharp frets. So that's really it. You have to watch out for the fret sprout and the tuning as well. Outside of that, this is a really fun guitar to play. And keep in mind, I spent just over 200 bucks on this thing, so that's pretty great. So you probably want to hear how this sounds, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, luckily I've chosen all green today. I've got sort of a green cable uh, running into the Boss Katana behind me here. And I just have a really clean channel with a little bit of reverb going on. We're just going to take a listen to all the pickups right now. Another thing to keep in mind is usually I use these uh, Andy James picks that are really thick. And uh, what I'm going to do actually for this review is I'm going to switch to like a Tortex um, 88 thickness pick here. Because I bet you a lot of people are probably using something closer to this than that thick thing. So this is actually going to affect the sound a little bit as well. Here's the neck pickup.
So that's kind of the neck pickup. Here's some, you know, Hendrix stuff. So that's the neck pickup. Now let's do the middle and neck together. Something funkier, maybe. Alright, there's something funky. Here's the middle pickup. Let's see what we get out of this. You can probably hear a little bit of that sort of slightly out of tune sound there, right? Okay, let's go to the uh, middle and bridge position. Again, back to that funky thing. Okay, and then the bridge position. Again, I've had the tone rolled up all the way for all of these pickups as well. So here's bridge. So that's sort of the sound of this guitar here. I'm not gonna really dirty it up yet. So my complete answer uh, to the first question, is this a good instrument for a beginner player? Yes, however, be wary of fret sprout and just be aware of how the tuning stability is. Again, the best way to do this is have someone play it at the store and take a listen and hear, does it sound kind of out and kind of wonky all the time? They should be able to know how to tune it and kind of play through it. Uh, they're not gonna have an issue with that, but definitely uh, just take a listen. If it sounds kind of wonky, uh, maybe look for something else. Otherwise, what's great about this instrument for beginner players is the nine and a half inch radius is really great for learning how to bend and learning how to do bar chords, which is something you're gonna be doing a lot when you first learn. That is so easy. And then the back of the neck feels really great, actually. I think this would be a great instrument for a beginner to learn on. Okay, and now to answer the second question, is this a viable instrument for a seasoned player? I would say yes as well, as long as you're not afraid to put some time and effort into fixing it up a little bit. Because again, uh, you're probably not gonna get a perfect guitar at this sort of price range, and you probably are used to something a little fancier, right? So if you're not afraid to do a little fret work, do a little adjustment at the truss rod, um, maybe even replace some parts if you need to. Just do some basic maintenance. If you're not afraid of that on a guitar, then this is probably worth it for you guys, especially, again, if you like the finish or you just need a Strat. That's definitely something I needed is, uh, I don't have any Strat style guitars and I wanted to start with one. Didn't want to spend a ton of money, so this is perfect. I can take this and I can replace some parts and fix it up a little bit and it's super worth it to me. So ask yourself, seasoned player, are you willing to put in a little time into something like this? then I'd say go for it. Okay guys, so that's been it. Uh, thanks for joining me today and talking about this cool little Affinity Strat. Uh, had a blast doing this. Uh, if you liked the video, uh, if you could leave a like on this, I would really appreciate that and it helps the channel out quite a bit. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. I do a bunch of different videos uh, like reaction videos, some review videos, and some music education videos as well. Also wanted to say the channel has gone over 100 subscribers now and we're probably closer to 150 by the time this comes out or maybe even 200, which is just incredible. So I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. And also when we hit 1,000, I want to do some sort of thing. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in this. But I might uh, order another kind of Squire guitar like this and fix it up and then do a giveaway and give it to one of you guys once we hit a thousand subscribers. So again, let me know if that's something you might be interested in or if you have another idea for what I could do. Anyway, that's been it. Uh, I enjoyed today. Hope you have a great rest of the day and I'll see you guys in the next video.